Hi guys, welcome back to our main homestead. Uh, last week you saw that we had our first ever twins born on the homestead and today we're going to be talking about another first for the homestead, which is our first bottle baby lamb. Um, so you did see the twins being born. The second one that was born was a little ewe lamb. Uh, the first one was a ram lamb, um, but our little ewe lamb, she was second. She was t much tinier. She was significantly like weaker and slower to be uh, getting up and nursing and all those things. She did eventually do all that stuff. She nursed, um, however, when she was about 36 hours old or so, so like a day and a half old, Eddie had gone out to the barn to do morning chores and saw that she was laid out on her side in the lambing jug. She was unresponsive when he approached her, got into the lambing jug, that sort of thing. She was dehydrated, hypothermic, and so he brought her into the cabin um, to hopefully have me help kind of revive her. Um, so together we worked on trying to get her warmed up, uh, trying to get her to nurse a little bit. Um, we'll talk more about what we offered her later in this video, but um, we did eventually get her warmed up. We did eventually get her to nurse a little bit. And so we just wanted to take you through um, some of the uh, behind the scenes of having a bottle baby living in the cabin with us. And as you can see, <laughs> so far so good. This is Wicklow. Yeah. So Wicklow, uh, yeah, is about to share her story of Whoa. living in the cabin instead of the barn. Go back there. Are we going to try to feed her a little bit? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm trying to simulate the angle that her head would be at whenever she's with mom. She's resistant. Are you, is it draining out? Don't mm -hmm. let it get on her. Or this blanket. She's done for the moment. Almost four ounces, so she drank an ounce. Mm. Hi, Angel. You feel a little bit better? Are you feeling better? Got a little milk in your belly? <coughs> Warmed up a smidge? Good girl. You just relax and keep getting better, okay? Hey, you feeling better? <coughs> you sweet girl. You didn't turn off your 
I told you. Oh, she's peeing. Good girl. Good girl. She's she's feeling better. Oh, there's a lot. Hi. So she's getting hydrated. That's good. We got her. We got to just keep angel. taking care of her. Hi, my so Wicklow, the baby lamb that we've been bottle feeding, started limping. Um, at first, there was nothing out of the ordinary. She wasn't painful at all. But then yesterday, we started noticing some pain in her hock, which is like her ankle area. And it was a little bit swollen. It's more swollen today. Um, and it's warmer than the other side. So you can definitely feel some, um, some heat in it. It's not burning up, but some heat there. So we've diagnosed her with joint ill, which is a bacterial infection that lambs are known to get. And so we started her on a course of antibiotics. We're using uh, LA-200, which is oxytetracycline. Um, and so we're giving it to her once a day. We gave her a dose last night, so now it's time to give her another dose. And we're going to do it for the next week-ish or so, week total. Tim's my trusty assistant. She's a tough girl. So we're hoping that this start, we start to see some effects of the antibiotics after, you know, probably after three or four doses, we hope. Um, she's not any worse at this point no other joint swollen which this is a systemic disease so um it could start to show up in other joints which it hasn't so far so hopefully we caught it early enough and the antibiotics will take care of it but only time will tell so we'll keep you updated So we were going to just chat with you guys real quick about the products that we've been using to bottle feed. Um, we started yes. out, well, we actually got this last year, the year before, something like that. Ago, yeah. When we start, when we knew that we were going to be having lambs, just in case we did have one that was rejected by mom or um, orphaned or anything like that. So um, the first thing that we've been using is called Do More. D-U-M-O-R, a multi-species colostrum supplement. Um, and so it's for several different species, but we just obviously Definitely followed... for sheep. Yes, we followed the directions on the back for lambs. So, so colostrum is the first thing that comes out of the mother's teats when a baby's born. So it's very important for um, immune system function, just nutrition in general, um, to give them a, a jump start. We don't know how much she got at all, um, so we fed her that. Go ahead. I was just going to say that we did actually see her nursing several times on the, well, like the first 24 hours that she was born. So we do assume that she got some from her mom. Yeah, we just don't um, know how much. And she had a, a brother, so, and she was obviously depressed, so we don't know how, what the competition might have been like, how much she got. So we fed this to her for the first two days she was in here. Yeah. Um, then we started um, gradually making the switch over to a um, homemade lamb milk replacer. So this is obviously just something that we want to use for the first few days to get all those essential like 
vitamins and nutrients and everything that you would get from mom right off the bat. But then not we, a long term solution. There's right. not a lot of nutrition 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 for long term health. It's yeah. just very not, short term to get her, right get the things that she would get from her mother. Yeah. Um, so then the milk replacer <laughs> essentially is going to be like higher protein, higher fat content, really higher fat content because sheep's milk is very very high in fat content um so we needed to basically reproduce that so that we could bottle feed that to her um i considered for a second um milking mom to add into the milk replacer that we were going to make for um for wicklow but she also has another lamb out there so and i just figured that would be too stressful for her because she's not one of my great milkers so anyways i nixed that idea and so we just went with the um homemade yeah. uh, milk replacer that eddie found a recipe for online and, and wicklow's brother is doing great out there yeah. just yes. on her so yes so it's, it's i didn't really want to i didn't want to interrupt that um so anyways it's just three ingredients we've got um whole milk heavy whipping cream and egg um, obviously our egg is locally sourced from our chicken coop. Um, but I also, just a personal preference, tried to make sure that the milk and the heavy whipping cream was also locally sourced. So I did get it at my local grocery store, but it's from a dairy farm that is, uh, near to us. So, um, Eddie can kind of chat with you a little bit about the milk replacer. Oh yeah, well you can obviously buy milk replacer. It's usually a powder and you mix it at home. Um, but we just went with a homemade recipe. The main thing, like Francesca said, the main thing is fat content. Obviously you're going to have protein, you're going to have carbs, you're going to have a lot of other things in it. But the fat content is your main goal. Um, from what I know, you want to you want to have at least about 35% fat content. This recipe, I think, has 60, 64% fat, so it's very fattening, but obviously they're growing very fast. Okay, I can't talk anymore. Whoa! Okay, well, why don't you put her down? Put her okay, on the floor. You go down. <laughs> All right, let's start over. Okay. So the main consideration when you're making a milk replacer is fat content. That's what you really want to focus on. There's obviously going to be protein, carbs, all the other things, lots of vitamins and minerals, depending on what you put in there. Um, we put in a whole egg in there, which is very good protein source and a lot of, um, you know, essentials in there for her. But the milk, whole milk, you definitely want to use whole milk. And then the whipping cream, or uh, the whipping cream is where you get the majority of the fat. The recipe we use is 64% fat. Um, you could probably get by with 40% or more. But this is just kind of a souped up recipe um, that I found some people have used for a long period of time with uh, very good success. And so we want to give, obviously, give her the best chance um, possible. So, yep. So the recipe that Eddie um, has been using and mixing up for us is 16 ounces of whole milk, two ounces of heavy whipping cream, and one egg, roughly one and a half ounces of egg. Um, so he whisks up the egg, he adds the heavy whipping cream to it, mixes that all together, and then he'll add that to the whole milk. Um, and then we just be sure to shake it, uh, really well before giving it to the lamb. Um, and warm it up. We, yeah. We warm it up so that it's, mm -hmm. you know, body temperature-ish. And if we, you know haven't had a chance to warm it up before we offer it to her she has been accepting it cold as well um, I know that a lot of other people talk about uh, that they will give it to them um, yeah, I don't, straight out of the fridge or whatever so I mean she go ahead sorry she's, she's staying inside so it's very warm you know very warm compared to the rest of the sheep that are outside um, cold has very little to do with any problems that you're gonna see in sheep they love the cold weather we've had temperatures as low as 25 below with newborn babies outside and they're thriving so um she's because she's in here warm the colder milk is not going to lower her body temperature or cause any issues with her yeah and she seems to accept it fine she doesn't really have a preference it doesn't seem like to the temperature of the milk that we offer her so yeah and yeah. then we as far as how much to feed there's it's hard to find a good number um it's funny you find people that say weigh the sheep and then feed that much 
of your milk replacer in ounces, which the milk replacer in ounces is in volume, and the weight is obviously in weight. Those don't go together. Anyway, so best I can figure out, 3.2 ounces per pound, um, to me, would be a way more accurate way to state how much she should be eating. And right now, she's about 7 pounds, and she's been eating... 22 to 24 ounces so she's above that amount so mm -hmm. she's so we're right in that sweet spot yep Thanks for watching guys uh, as you see Wicklow's doing really well so far so good she's thriving I would say at this point um, depending on how her her leg heals um, with the course of antibiotics and how she's just doing overall and to some extent the weather just because she's not acclimated to being outside so we'll probably make that transition slowly but around four to six weeks we plan on and she's about a week old now we plan on um, introducing her back in with her brothers and sisters and mothers and aunts and uncles. <laughs> um, so we're, you know, we got another three weeks or so with her in here. The other factor might be how big she gets and how, how fast. Yeah, how hard she is to deal with in here. She's very active. She stays in her box most of the time, but we let her. Right now, she's roaming the the, the cabin, and but she does extremely well. She's not destructive like a lot of dogs are <laughs> yeah and of course she gets a lot of outside stretching her legs time yeah, um, yeah. we've been working our way on like maybe potty training her so we've been <laughs> treating her like a little puppy taking her out for frequent potty breaks so that she doesn't mess up her box too fast but yeah so depending on how everything goes we're gonna play it by ear but she will eventually transition back outside to the barn with the other sheep um, but yeah, so we'll definitely keep you guys updated on her progress. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, uh, give us a thumbs up, comment, leave a comment below. We'll get back to you ASAP, um, and we'll see you guys next week.